In this video we'll be showing how an existing fiberglass water tank can be repaired using a fiberglass repair kit. With some preparation work, fiberglass bonds well to existing fiberglass and other substrates, making it an excellent repair system. You can purchase resin library fiberglass repair kits in a range of sizes. Simply click the link in the description below and if you like our videos please subscribe. Fiberglassing can be dangerous work wear PPE and perform in a well ventilated area. We urge you to consult an experienced professional if you're uncertain. Ensure all work is performed in the dry. Wet or damp surfaces will introduce moisture and lead to a drastically reduced lifetime. So we started off by inverting the water tank to expose the outer damaged areas. As you can see, there's several cracks and holes and damaged regions. The first step was to fill these holes with a filler. In this example we're injecting a standard foam that matches the foam inside the tank. Once this has been done allow it to harden approximately 60 minutes or check with the manufacturer for a more specific time. Once the filler has been injected it may be necessary to apply some degree of pressure to ensure that the original structure of the tank is maintained. Once it's cured, cut off excess strips using a Stanley knife or equivalent. The aim is to create and maintain a flat and consistent surface for the laminate. Once the strips have been removed, carefully sand back using sandpaper or an equivalent to create a mildly rough surface. Using a brush, apply a thin layer of resin primer to the surface that's being repaired. Whilst optional, the primer will improve the adhesion between the fiberglass repair and the existing structure. When making the repair, the amount of resin that you need per square metre of glass fibre matting is important in creating a high quality laminate and therefore high quality repair. For single layer laminates, minimal amounts of resin center on 1.1 kilogram per square meter for 50 gram matting and 1.5 kilogram per square meter for 600 gram matting. If you're adding two layers then it would be around 1.1 kilogram per square meter per layer for 450 gram matting with 2.2 kilograms per square meter in total. For 600 gram matting it would be 1.5 kilogram per square meter per layer with three kilograms per square meter in total. It's a good idea to experiment with this in advance to make sure you have the right laminate finish and quality. An extra 10 to 15% of the resin might be needed if required. Polyester resin requires a catalyst, also known as a hardener or MEKP to initiate curing. MEKP catalyst is added in a 1 to 4% volume to weight ratio to the resin. Concentrations outside of this range will lead to a substandard laminate. For example, every kilogram of polyester resin to be used, add between 10 and 40 milliliters of MEKP catalyst and thoroughly mix it in. Lower concentrations, such as 1 to 2% of MEKP, are preferred for warmer temperatures, whilst higher concentrations, 3 to 4% of MEKP, are preferred for colder ones. Catalyzed polyester resin should be used within a 15 to 20 minute window to avoid curing prior to application. Prepare workable amounts of catalyzed resin. If possible, practice in advance to ensure concentrations lead to a good quality laminate. As you can see, the table on the right provides recommended volumes of MEKP catalyst to be added to the resin to induce the curing step. These volumes of catalyst are in different rows depending on the desired cure rate. Catalyst should be accurately measured out before being carefully poured into the resin. 
It should be thoroughly mixed using a clean mixing tool. You should expect to see a slight colour change in the resin. When making the repair, saturate sections of glass fibre matting in the catalyzed resin and then consolidating it using a paddle roller or a paintbrush for smaller areas and then transfer it to the damaged section and position them into place over the damaged areas intended to be repaired. There are several techniques that can be used. This one shows a tearing action designed to stretch the laminate over the repaired section. It is messy work at this point, so obviously make sure that you're wearing protective gloves. We recommend nitrile gloves and abrasion resistant gloves when dealing with the glass fibre matting as well, so two layers. For each layer it's important to tidy them up, making sure that they're flat and consistent against the damaged area. This will help with the successive layers of matting. As you can see, a second layer is going on for added reinforcement using the same process. Once the laminate has been put into position, consolidate it using a paddle roller. This helps drive excess air out of the laminate, drives resin into the laminate, making it more consistent. It also creates a more uniform finish against the damaged area. Once the smaller damaged areas have been repaired, you can start to apply larger quantities of matting and catalyst onto the base areas of the tank. As you can see here, we're using quite a large amount of the catalyzed resin and applying that to the bottom of the tank using a polyester roller. It's important to drive out excess air, and as you can see, the original patches, white patches, and the glass fiber matting that were present have been removed. Once complete, allow the laminate to cure for a period of around two hours or more before applying the top coat. The next step involves the application of top coat, which is an optional step. It could be your own custom top coat that you buy from a supplier that matches the existing structure, or it could just be a standard top coat that you can get from Resin Library. Adding the correct amount of top coat resin per square meter of cured laminate is important in creating a high quality finish. For the top coat shown here, the recommended amount is 0.5 kilograms per square meter of cured laminate. An extra 10 to 15% of catalyzed top coat may be required in some instances on a case by case basis. Top coat resin requires a catalyst, also known as MEKP, to initiate curing. MEKP catalyst is added in a 1 to 4% volume to weight ratio to the top coat. Concentrations outside of this range will lead to a substandard cure. Lower concentrations, 1 to 2% of MEKP, are typically preferred for warmer temperatures, whilst higher concentrations of 3 to 4% of MEKP are preferred for colder ones. For example, for every kilogram of top coat to be used, add between 10 and 40 millilitres of MEKP catalyst and thoroughly mix it in, more so than standard polyester resin because it's got a higher viscosity. Catalyzed top coat resin should be used within a 15 to 20 minute window to avoid curing prior to application. Prepare workable amounts of catalyzed top coat. If possible, practice in advance to ensure concentrations lead to a good quality finish. The table on the right shows the different amounts of catalyst that you need to add to different amounts of resin in order to achieve a specific concentration. Accurately measure the amount of MEKP catalyst and carefully pour it into the resin top coat. It should be mixed thoroughly, particularly because this is a more viscous resin. When applying the top coat, use a roller for larger areas or a brush for smaller ones. Once applied, allow to cure for a minimum of two hours for a partial cure or 24 to 48 hours for a longer cure. 
This video is for general informational purposes only. It does not constitute fiberglassing or any building related advice. Resin Library is not liable for any outcomes. The use of information linked to this video is at the user's own risk. Content in this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice. Users should not disregard in obtaining professional advice.